As all lives globally became impacted in 2020 to various degrees by the COVID-19 pandemic, reports emerged of the disproportionate amount of minority ethnic and people of colour that had died in the UK as a result of the pandemic. As the news broke of the murder of George Floyd in the US, the Black Lives Matter movement responded, gaining fast momentum, reaching corners of our society in the UK it had failed to reach before. What resonated for many people of colour and specifically black people were feelings of pain and anger that could be both felt and seen in our streets through peaceful protest and in some cases manifesting as societal enactments of unrest and trauma. Some white people spoke of feelings of guilt and shame while others seemingly felt greater legitimacy in expressing feelings of hate towards people of colour in response to their taking up space. As government advisers continue to hypothesise as to why more people of colour might be dying of COVID, many ethnic minority and people of colour already knew why. Because if you have experienced racism, you know it when you see it. You know it when you feel it. You just know. This article, the first of a new expert opinion article category for the journal, explores the concepts of white privilege and white supremacy and how they may impact art therapy trainings, theories and practice. This includes the way in which art therapists may work with the art medium to decolonise the visual realm and opens up discussion about how white art therapists may greater engage in what is referred to as the work. The work describes the way in which white people may address the part they play in white supremacist society and how they can truly support people experiencing racism. Theories of behaviour that perpetuate and bolster white supremacy, such as white fragility and white exceptionalism, are explored along with how they may manifest or come alive in the work of arts therapists in training and practice. Intersectional thinking, which explores identities as they are simultaneously experienced and socially constructed, is considered as a self-reflexive tool that may support white art therapists in exploring their white privilege. Other key concepts of intersectional thinking are also examined, such as acknowledging the social and political, concepts of social justice and therapist activist work, constructs of power and the importance of giving voice to marginalised communities. This article is a call to white art therapists to ask ourselves, am I doing the work? Then for us to address our own white privilege and white fragility, to share resources and engage each other in support and discussion about the ways in which we can combat our own complicity in white supremacy and look towards making meaningful change for ourselves, our clients and our society.